Hey everybody, it is Lauren Delisa Coleman here again for the Inside Series, a special coverage for Sundance Film Festival. So excited to be able to bring you this next interview because we have not only the filmmaker, but a couple of the actors in the film, which is kind of unusual for us. Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't, but you guys, welcome to the show. Let me just like kick off everybody's um, name and fabulous title. So we have Carlos Cardona, who is the director and writer of the film that we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, Cheeky, which I love, <clears throat> I love the name of this, even though it's spelled not as it sounds, you guys. And then I have next, Sebastian Beltran, who is the antagonist. And then <laughs> last but certainly la not least, which I should have done first, ladies first, is <laughs> Brigitte Silva, who is the lead in Cheeky. So you guys, thank you so much for taking out the time. I know that you're super busy and there's a lot going on with, with the festival, even though it's virtual. So thank you, first of all, um, for you. joining us. Thank you for having us, yeah. And um, so who, I'm assuming it's probably Carlos, wants to kick it off for us to give us um, a synopsis of, of Cheeky because, um, I don't know, I just love how you've kind of given us a different voice to be able to see in, in this film. And I think that's the cool thing about Sundance, where you get to see, you know, people and characters doing things who we don't see enough, right? So go for it, Carlos. Yeah, so Cheeky is based off the true story of my parents immigrating from Colombia to the United States in 1987. Um, it tells the story of their first two weeks in the country and their decision to leave uh, Newark, New Jersey, which at the time was a very rough place to live in and moved to the more uh, secluded and isolated setting oh, of Montauk. In, in some areas, it's still a little bit rough. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyway. historic, right, so it has a history of, of that. So yeah, so it's about their decision to um, you know, leave one place and go to another. Great. Um, so let's, I guess, get a little bit into, I mean, really maybe why you decided to to delve into this story of, of your parents, right? To be able to actually bring it to life as a film. Yeah, um, so uh, I've been going through a, a, a period in my, uh, in my career as a filmmaker and as a storyteller of telling and, and making films about not only myself, the people that I know. I think I found a lane in, in personal autobiographical filmmaking, which I like to refer to as autofiction. Uh, my previous- I love that. Uh, my previous uh, film was a feature named Scenes from a Breakup, and it's about uh, it's about myself and a few of my colleagues and uh, the dismantling of a relationship and the effects that it has uh, that it had on these characters and really you know our lives um, as artists and as young people. And so um, Cheeky is sort of I'm not going to say an extension of of that, but um, you know it, it, it's it's much you know a, a story about you know it's about my parents and about their story um, and their experience as immigrants. Um, in the 1980s and just in America um, as a whole. And uh, part of the reason that I wanted to tell this story is not only because I think my parents or specifically my mother's story is very unique, but also I, I wanted to see some a story told about immigrants through a different perspective or a different lens than what I've been accustomed to seeing. Um, a lot of films that I've seen about the Latino immigrant experience, specifically the Colombian experience, has been always told through a sort of uh, a lens of dire circumstance. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, anyone that has, uh, you know, that makes the, you know, chooses or makes the decision to leave their country to, to uh, come to a place like America without a career, without the language, without the means and the resources to have a comfortable and stable life is always, there's always drama involved in whether it's small or whether it's big. And so for, um, you know, what I wanted to see, specifically because it's it's about, the, it's in the late 80s, you know, when I was born, my parents first came here, their formative years. A lot of the stories that are told of Colombian immigrants at that time, they're almost always about Pablo Escobar or the drug trade or the right, violence right, right. or things like that, which of course, those are a big part of our culture. And, you know, Colombia was put on the map because of Pablo Escobar, because of what happened. However, I wanted to see something where the, char the, the, the lies of the characters are explored more from an internal space, from a place right. of to their struggles with language. Right? Because there's to give dimension. Not, yeah. No peoples anywhere have just only one scenario. Exactly. On, right? I think exactly. That's really and special. exactly. And so a lot of the stories that we, we see are, you know, characters that um, that's that they're predicated on the external hardships rather than the internal. And mm -hmm. so, um, and I think because, you know, me being a first generation Colombian American, 
I think I have a very unique perspective because I'm able to tell a story that's both critical of America, of of our capitalist structure that we live in this country, but also to make critiques on Colombia and sort of the traditional uh, cornerstones uh, of of uh, you know a, a, a culture and an identity that I was you know I, I was privy to and and had and had witnessed you know my parents struggle with the managing and compartmentalizing them themselves being American, but also being Colombian. So I think, um, I think it's just, I think it's a, a story that just um, needs to be told, but also mainly because, you know, I am ultimately American and Cheeky is a very, very American story, despite the fact that it's about uh, Colombian immigrants. I think uh, a lot of people across cultures and, ac and across languages can identify with the struggles um, and, and everything that these characters have gone through. I think it's, it's just, like I said, very, very fulfilling to watch because you're like, yeah, how do I not know these characters, right? In real, in real life, why don't I see this more often? So I'm just so glad that you've been able to to bring all this together. Let's talk a little bit about um, your actors here. How did you um, kind of come to to cast them, and what was the whole kind of experience? like and you can say if you really hate each other really love each other only joking but you know everybody always says oh it's like a family and it was great you know how how was the experience for for you guys yeah um i met bridget actually a uh, long time ago when we worked in the service industry together and um bridget was uh you know aspire you know we we're all, we we're aspiring artists at the time and uh you know bridget's you know she was an actor and i was like oh i'm a filmmaker and we sort of had that bond already and on top of that you know we're both colombians bridget directly from the source me mm -hmm. uh born here but um i you know speak fluent spanish um and a sort of joke between bridget and i is that um you know she was just sort of like oh my god this person i met here in the united states is uh, speaks Spanish and is Colombian, but you know his Spanish is perfect and fluent, but he sounds like my grandmother. <laughs> sounds like my yeah. uncle, because um, you know I I only speak Spanish with my mother, and I I you know growing up I had very few friends that spoke Spanish, so my Spanish is sort of a time capsule of a particular period in time of our parents. Oh, uh, interesting. Our, our parents, yeah. And so, and so uh, you know, Bridget just is, is an amazing person and also an amazing artist, and Bridget <clears throat> her her sort of her demeanor, her ethos, her personality just really, always reminded me kind of of my mother a little bit. And so what we were like, let's do a project together. And we didn't really know what we wanted to do until I was like, oh my God, I've always wanted to make a film about my mother, about my parents. And so I approached Bridget and asked her about it. And she's like, let's do it. And, I, and really had, had I not met Bridget, had Bridget not said yes, none of this would have existed. And so Bridget also um, you know, because I, you know, I'm an independent filmmaker. I don't have the budget or the resources to get a casting director where I can have a very intensive casting process to find because right. Chucky is about these characters and it's specifically about language and about, it was important for me to have a person that comes from their respective countries. So my mother is from Bogota, Bridget's from Bogota, Sebastian is from it, 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 Medellin, right? And, well, in Armenia, close to Medellin. And Antokia. And it was it was very important to have these characters embody um, uh, uh, the the accent and just the lived experience. Mm, and so Bridget introduced me to Sebastian, introduced me to Catherine French, and I was just very fortunate to be able to have a network of Colombian actors that were really just perfect for the roles. Very and cool. yeah, and so I mean, had, it sounds had, like everything was organic. Exactly, it was a perfect storm. And so that's that's how it all came about. So Bridget, can you tell me what was maybe the most challenging thing about preparing for this role? I mean, it sounds like you had obviously a lot that you could pull on just from, you know, your your life experience, but certainly, you know, that's never like 100%. So where or how did you have to reach in order to be able to get to where you wanted to be for this particular character? Well, I think the hardest part was trying to not fall into the, the, the mimic or like make Chiku ridiculous just like because he could become that uh but like it was amazing to have the experience of like a rare thing to like actually meet the person to meet like carlos mother that's something that an actor usually don't have the opportunity to. so i was like mm -hmm. able to talk to her and understand her and more than do the mimic of how she was like understand her motivations uh, what was in her mind when she was coming here to like try to do interpretation that I had uh, of her. 
and uh, just imitate completely. And still kind of got most of the gestures because it's really hilarious the way that she, I found a lot of comedy with that and like physical ways to move and say things that I was like, oh, this is funny. And it's going to take all the drama that is there with like a comedy thing. Um, so yeah, the challenge was like not being like show cheeky as a ridiculous character or like a bad Machiavelli character just like try to find like to show how we are as a humans we're not good or bad we're good and bad depending on the circumstances that we're going through so got it so you can just say so it was more that yeah thank you so much and Sebastian what would you say maybe that you learned most from this kind of experience overall working with you know Carlos Brigitte the crew etc what are you, are you taking away most I guess professionally it was an amazing experience overall and it really felt like a family <laughs> sorry that I, that I fall into the cliche but it was wonderful working with uh, every single one of them let's say that um the what i, what I learned the most was by playing uh, carlos senior was um the story resonated with me a lot because my parents had the same experience they were both colombian immigrants they came to america and uh mid 1980s and i was born here so i was able to feel that uh that pain that they felt to come here with the uh, absolutely Colombian exodus of the 1980s from another perspective so it was a fantastically wow. enriching experience so sebastian i'm just so glad that you know both of you can can join us because obviously it gives additional depth to you know what the filmmaker is is sharing with us just really briefly back to you carlos um why do you think festivals particularly sundance are important um today for filmmakers whether you look at it from an independent point of view or filmmakers of color just in general why do you think it's still just so very pertinent and so very much a part of the industry and culture overall um, I think festivals, specifically the Sundance Film Festival, have just historically always championed uh, independent voices. Uh, a lot of my favorite filmmakers that I've drawn so much inspiration from, you know, Quentin Tarantino, Jim Jarmusch, Kelly Reichert, all of these people started at Sundance. And their Sundance it facilitated their unique voices and perspectives. And they, you know, they've had such an impact on not only just the independent cinema world, but just like film and film culture and culture in general. And so um, Sundance, I feel, is just an invaluable source for um, for independent stories and voices, um, of course, you know there there you know there is you know it is it, to a certain degree it, you know it's adjacent to the Hollywood and dominant cinema structure, um, but you know they still um, despite they've been around for forty years and everything that they've gone through throughout the years they still are a leading leading force and voice for independent film. Well, definitely, congrats for being included in Sundance 2020's lineup, or sorry, 2022's lineup. I hope it really is just um, so good for all of you guys. Just last thing, what's the best way for viewers to kind of keep up with what you're doing, this film, et cetera, um, via, I guess, social or a particular URL, whatever is good? Go on ahead and throw it out. Yeah, so obviously, you know, the film is being it's being premiered at Sundance.org or Sundance. Oh, and so by the way, you guys, way. it's spelled, sorry, not to interrupt, but just to make sure, Cheeky, so C-H-I-Q-U-I. Uh, you know, just want to make sure. And yeah. so what else? Yeah, so obviously it's all over Sundance, and so that's probably yeah. the best way to go through the site and then be able to be connected to more of what you're doing through that. Absolutely. And also uh, the production company, uh, One Love Picture Classics, uh, that produced the film, um, that is, you know, uh, our work and the work that we've been a part of is absolutely amazing. And also uh, my my social is uh, carlos.cardona on Instagram. That's uh, sort of the portfolio. I'm also a photographer and that's like my photo photo journal, if you will, and just and my business cards. So oh, that's great. Yeah, and Cardona yeah. is spelled, just in case, uh, C-A-R-D-O-N-A. Yeah, exactly. Great. All right, you guys, well, I just want to thank you so very much. I know you have to jump, but thank you for taking the time. Again, I wish thank you, you so much. super success during the thank festival you. and beyond. And you guys, you. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this. Definitely look out for, for Cheeky. Like I said, it's just really important to see more dimensions and more voices um, than we've just been traditionally shown, right? Because it expands your mind as well. So Absolutely. I am Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series right here at film.io. Thank you for watching.